Hello and welcome. How much battery power, how much solar power does one need when building out an expedition vehicle, a truck camper or a van, uh, specifically, I want to say, for full-time travel and work from the road? Uh, I went through this experience with my previous rig. I'm building a new expedition vehicle at this point. And all the learnings from my previous rig and previously being out there working, boondocking, not using shore power, all these learnings are going into that new rig that is currently being built for me. And uh, I had a few people asking why I went with that specific electrical component selection and everything in that new rig compared to before. So let me go back a little bit in history with my first rig, my first expedition vehicle. Um, I had a Ford F-250 Tremor with a Super Trem camper in the back. Uh, the camper came with 330 watts of solar and 400 amp hour battery power right from the factory. And uh, I was hopeful and under the assumption uh, that should probably be enough solar to recharge the batteries. 400 amp hours should be plenty. Uh, I should be fine. And well, it turned out to be I was not fine. Uh, I went for my first work week camping and I ran out of power and ran out of power very quickly. I arrived on a Sunday afternoon and Wednesday morning uh, I had to pull the plug and head back home because I would not make it through the day and uh, I would run out of battery power sometime midday unless a miracle would happen and well uh, there was no miracle to happen because it is what it is the way how the camper came. When I came home, uh, to my surprise, I thought it's like, okay, I'm driving home. There's a lot of DC, DC charging. The batteries probably should be fairly full again when I came home. And well, I had less than 8% of battery power generated from my DC, DC charging while driving home for two hours. And that's not a whole lot. And uh, I was really shocked. I was it's like, holy cow, what's going on here? So I started looking at the electrical components in that camper in more detail. And uh, the first thing I noticed is that the uh, solar charge controller was completely undersized. I had 330 watts of solar. During this half week of boondocking when I was monitoring the solar, I never got higher than 209 watts uh, putting electricity back into the batteries. And I was thinking, yeah, it's fall, the sun is not uh, up as many hours as during summer and so on. But no, it's a solar controller because when I started looking at the amperage, uh, the solar controller was running uh, or had a limit of 15 amps uh, going back into the batteries. And that's exactly correlated uh, with the 209 watts of solar. So at 209 watts of solar, uh, I was pretty much at 15 amps and uh, I could not use the remaining 121 watts of solar um, sitting on the roof. Not that I would get 100% out of it. There's always some some leakage, some you're losing some, but I probably should have been more at 280, 290 watts uh, coming in from the uh, solar panels up on top. So I knew the solar charge controller needed to go. Whoa, cut, let's uh, have a quick break here. Uh, if you don't mind subscribing to my channel, I would really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, if you hit that subscribe button down there, it really helps me out. And uh, you get also notified uh, when a new video is uploaded. Thank you so much. And now let's continue. I also needed to look at the solar panels because it was just not enough. Uh, I went to my off-road shop, Basil's Garage, here in Vista, California, and uh, I talked to him about what is my situation, uh, what are the limits I'm running into, and how can we change this. So together with Basil, we designed a new electrical system, and uh, we decided to uh, rip out the uh, two Victron uh, controllers, one the solar charger, the other one for DC-DC charging, uh, upgrade the wiring to significantly thicker wires uh, so that I could transport more electricity from the alternator into the batteries from additional solar into the batteries. Uh, we decided to go with a Red Arc system and use two Red Arc BCDC 1250D controllers. Uh, what would these two controllers do? So first of all, from a DC to DC charging perspective, I would get 100 amps going from the alternators into the battery bank. And that roughly amounted to 1400 watts. I just want to mention it both. Um, the amp, I think, is the more important number. So 100 amp hours coming from the DC-DC charging, uh, that would mean that I could bring my battery bank while driving from 0 to 400 amp hours to 100% within roughly four hours of driving. I mean, that's um, theoretically, um, but I would also assume that I don't have the batteries completely empty and so on. But that was the first part with the uh, Red Arcs. Um, so I was covered from a DC-DC charging perspective. 
uh, solar. So with these um, radar controllers, I now was able to get more solar power into the batteries. And the next thing on top of replacing the Victron equipment with the Red Arcs, I also doubled the amount of solar on the roof. So I went from 330 watts of solar to 660 watts. And that should bring me to about, I want to say, 580 usable watts uh, of uh, solar power going back into the batteries. Again, there's always some, some leakage or slippage or whatever you want to call it. You never get it 100%, uh, but that was a step in the right direction. In addition, I decided to get some external solar panels and Basil hooked up an external uh, solar panel port. And I added a total of 660 watts on the outside portable panels that I could point at the sun. So even during a fall and winter when the sun is low, I could position these solar panels almost perfectly going to the sun. And the moment the sun comes over the horizon, these panels would start producing electrical power while the panels on the roof would not be in an ideal position at that point in time. And uh, with this combination of doubling the solar on the roof, adding 660 watts of external solar panels, um, getting the DC-DC charging in line with what I needed, um, I was in a good spot. Uh, the next time I uh, went out to start working from the road, I had zero problems. Uh, it was pretty much after the second day, I didn't even worry about it anymore. I didn't need the three external solar panels. One external solar panel was actually fine. And um, the main thing with the external solar panel, uh, position it outside, uh, 6.30, 6.45, whenever the sun comes over the horizon, this was in January, uh, here in Southern California, um, I started producing power. And by 11 or 12 midday, I was back at 100%. Uh, yes, I would use a little more power uh, at night because the sun goes down quicker too. But overall, um, after the second day, it's like I didn't worry about it anymore. Um, the electrical system was fine. Why am I using so much power? That's another question. And one thing is um, I need internet. I can work remotely. Uh, I decided to go with the high performance dish uh, from Starlink. I had the regular residential dish before and while it worked, it wasn't reliable enough for me. And uh, when I went out the first time, really I had issues being in Zoom meetings and uh, so it's like I had to do something. If I go and want to make this work, I need to make sure that I have reliable internet with high speed. So I went just all out, went with the fastest and biggest dish available from Starlink, and that took care of the problem. Uh, on the downside, this thing is super power hungry. So if uh, you want to use that, you better make sure that you have enough solar and battery power uh, to be able to go through those work days because that dish really, uh, it can drain your batteries very quickly. So you need to, you need to make sure to turn it off when you don't use it and uh, conserve as much battery power. So it requires a little more discipline in regards to, okay, um, uh, turn this thing off when you go to bed, don't let it run through the night turn it on in the morning, not immediately, um, or maybe only just for a short time uh, to get the day started before then being online full time. So that thing is power hungry. I also had a 27 inch 4K monitor and looking at that one, um, for one it was heavy, uh, but it also consumed a lot of power. And then I'm using two laptops, uh, a work laptop, a personal laptop. Um, I work on my personal laptop at night. I'm trying to edit videos here for the YouTube channel, build up a small business to generate some side income. You get the idea. I use a lot of power. It's just how I operate. And uh, well, certain things I can replace, like I replaced the monitor with a 22 inch monitor, one that is specifically designed that can be powered from a laptop. So it uses significantly less power. And um, that also is a big step uh, from my um, configuration, I want to say, uh, to keep my power consumption under control. So understanding how I use the power and what I can do there uh, is an important part. And that's really the important, uh, I want to say, other side of the equation. For one, you need to generate enough power. You need to be able to store enough power. And uh, then you need to look at your power consumption and change your behavior or change components of the power consumption so that everything aligns appropriately. So in my new camper, I will have 800 watts of solar on the roof. Um, I will probably bring two external panels until I'm sure that I only need one external panel because it's also weight. Uh, these things are heavy. And uh, yeah, uh, that puts me, let's say, 
with the 800 watts of solar on the roof, uh, one external panel at a, at a little over 1000 uh, watts of solar power that I can generate. As mentioned, the rig has high charging, uh, high DC DC charging, so 100 amps uh, going in from the alternators. I should be okay. Uh, I looked at my power consumption and I added on top of it. So uh, I was calculating with about 170 amp hours per day uh, consumption for power. That is much more than I most likely will use, uh, but I want to have a buffer in there. So uh, that puts me at for two days, 340 watts at four days at 680. And it puts me at 1,020 for six days. And I'm calculating six days arriving at a campsite on Sunday afternoon, leaving the campsite on Saturday afternoon to go back into town. And um, so if I can make it through that time with my power production and power consumption and the battery bank, I will be fine. So in this case, um, I will roughly use 1,020. I only have 800. There's already a gap of 220 watts. Uh, from a battery perspective. Uh, even on rainy days or cloudy days, there will always be a little solar production. So even on those days, let's say um, there will be six days of just 30 uh, amp hours of solar production. That's 180, that puts me at 980. So the gap is now at 40 uh, amp hours. And I have the truck to idle. Um, that fills the gap just fine. Uh, I should be okay. Again, this is really, much more power than I will most likely consume just based on my experience. And with a worst case scenario of arriving with 100% batteries, almost zero, just zero, almost um, nothing from a solar power production perspective, and I can make it through a work week. And that's my goal, really. I don't want to be out there for two weeks in one place. Uh, for one, it's boring, and maybe I do, but I still have to go and get rid of trash. I need more food and drink. I have a dog with me, so there's a certain amount of things that I need to go back to town. I want to do laundry. Uh, I need to probably refill the tank um, for the truck, especially in the colder months, um, because my heating system uses gasoline from the truck. And um, so I need to make sure I always have enough fuel on board when going there. So really the use case is six days. Uh, in reality, previously I pretty much worked until Wednesday, mid late afternoon, uh, broke camp and traveled for another 20 or 30 miles. In this case, I was traveling down the Mojave Road, which is 150 ish miles of dirt road. So I traveled another 20 miles to a different campsite uh, on, first, uh, on Wednesday afternoon. So I would be producing power. I produced power during that drive again to refill the batteries. And so that's really my realistic use case. Um, either be stationary for a week or camp for three, four days, travel a little bit, set up camp again for the remaining parts of the week, and then on the weekend, again, go back into town, um, do laundry, and so on. So this applies not just to my expedition vehicle, this applies to RVs, to vans, truck campers, whatever you're building out there. Just think about your use case, especially if you want to travel full time, uh, if you need high speed internet. Um, this is where a lot of your power consumption comes into the mix and uh, you need to be able to produce it. If you need to bring a generator, then bring a generator. There's nothing wrong with it. The, um, like the Honda generator is really quiet. The 2200 or whatever it's called um, doesn't use that much gasoline. Should be enough to get you through those uh, cloudy and rainy days. Uh, friends of mine, they are in film production. They have a really high need for power. They bring a generator. They know that they cannot produce enough um, with uh, the solar panels, not even if they would uh, triple the solar panels because they're also in areas where it's potentially very cloudy and rainy. They live in the uh, northeastern 
part of the United States. But uh, this really make up your use case. And for me, it's really, okay, if I would run into problems, I have a couple of options. Uh, I can replace the solar panels on the roof and put more solar on the roof. I could probably add another battery uh, to the uh, camper, to my expedition vehicle. I could also just buy a generator and um, schlep the generator around, uh, let it run a couple of hours and recharge the batteries. And then I'm good. So um, I should be fine. I am not worried about it, but uh, I have my plan. I know what I'm doing is the best what I can do right now because it's also a financial question. Um, adding these things in and then never using them uh, might be a waste of money. I'd rather go with it's like, okay, I can still go a little further by upgrading the system if necessary, but I leave that extra weight and everything on the side for now. So that is it. I hope this answers the question why I went with 800 watts of solar and 800 amp hours of battery power and uh, why you should think about what you're doing with your truck camper, RV or van. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. And I would say I see you next time in my next video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.